Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some of the recent discoveries in regards to the more unusual galaxies that we kind of think might not possess any dark matter. The mysterious phenomenon we still don't really understand very well, but the phenomenon that seems to be out there. And to be more specific, we're talking about these very iconic galaxies, which are kind of barely even visible here. This one is known as NGC 1052-DF2 that in the past few years created a lot of problems for a lot of different cosmologists. First of all, compared to a lot of other galaxies of the same type, the diffuse galaxies DF2 and DF4 seem to possess pretty much nothing on the inside, only a few stars and only some gas, no dark matter whatsoever. Which creates a few problems for the scientists, but I guess the biggest problem is that nobody can explain how this happened. But more importantly, it invalidates various alternative explanations in regards to the idea of dark matter. But now we have this very new study that seems to go even further and discovers something else really intriguing. So let's talk about these discoveries, what all of this means, and more importantly, where we're most likely headed in the future. But let's start with a very important side note. At the moment, nobody knows what dark matter is. Nobody knows if it's actual matter, nobody knows if it's just a phenomenon or some kind of a misinterpretation in our observations. And up until this point, there was no good explanation for how certain galaxies seem to possess none of it. But there is dark matter phenomenon nevertheless. It's been observed from a lot of different things around the universe. From motion of the stars around galaxies, to various dilation effects that cannot be explained otherwise, to a lot of other unusual mass observations which can really only be explained as some invisible matter hiding between various galactic clusters. In other words, it seems to be there, but maybe it's not. Maybe it is due to our misunderstanding of how gravity formula work. For example, MOND, or Modified Newtonian Dynamics, tries to explain all of this by slightly changing the Newtonian gravity formula. And it seems to apply to some objects, for example, some motion of stars and different other objects in different galaxies, but the existence of galaxies with no dark matter creates a huge problem for this particular idea. Galaxies like this imply that MOND might be incorrect. And because of this, there's been a kind of a long discussion now between scientists supporting MOND and scientists supporting the dark matter theory, where some scientists have suggested that maybe we just miscalculated the distance to these different galaxies, and they're actually much closer to us, with motion appearing differently. And another recent study has even suggested that certain galaxies that seem to possess no dark matter could maybe just be observed from a very different angle. Instead of looking at them face on, we might be just looking at them from a slightly shifted angle where motion appears differently. Oh, and by the way, quick clarification, when we're talking about motion, in this case, the scientists are actually measuring the motion of different global clusters that are orbiting around these galaxies. These objects are pretty bright and they're quite easily visible from millions of light years away from us, so that's what they're really talking about. Although in some cases, they also measure the motion of the actual dust inside the galaxies, but usually it's global clusters. But more importantly, a lot of astronomers today believe that galaxies cannot form without some kind of a presence of dark matter. As a matter of fact, dark matter is believed to be the foundation for the formation of galaxies in the, what you are observing right here, in the cosmic web. And so it's the cosmic web in this case that's responsible for more or less creating the galaxies we're observing across the universe. And the cosmic web seems to be produced by the mysterious dark matter. At least that's one of the most accepted explanations. But when the scientists discovered DF2 and DF4, which seemed to be relatively close to one another, this was kind of strange. And so here, the scientists behind the original discovery started to speculate, maybe there's actually more. Maybe there's an entire trail of these unusual galaxies, which might have been created in a very unique way. Moreover, when it comes to the type of these galaxies, there are already so many unanswered questions. So these galaxies are generally known as the ultra-diffuse galaxies, or UDGs for short. Unlike a typical dwarf galaxy like this one right here, known as Small Magellanic Cloud, a typical UDG is defined by an extremely low brightness. Mostly because there are not a lot of stars, but there is quite a lot of mass here nevertheless, usually through the presence of different types of gas, and potentially a lot of other massive objects as well, maybe black holes, maybe something else. But the strangest thing about UDGs is how different they are even within this class itself. Some of them seem to possess ridiculous amounts of mass. A good example here is the galaxy you see on the screen known as Dragonfly 44. Its mass is huge. It's essentially just a little bit less massive than our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Once again, determined by measuring various global clusters. But 
Its luminosity and overall look, I guess, is very similar to those other galaxies I showed you that don't have any dark matter, and their mass is ridiculously small in comparison. So in this sense, it doesn't really make sense how some of these galaxies have huge amounts of dark matter, almost entirely made out of it as a matter of fact, and some galaxies seem to have none. And looks like, in this paper, the scientists might have found one good explanation with visual confirmation of what they're actually looking at. So what exactly is this and what does all of this mean? In this new paper, the astronomers realized that there seems to be some kind of a line of at least 11 different ultra-diffuse galaxies that don't actually contain any dark matter in them, and all of them might have been created in a very similar way. They were probably formed as a result of some kind of a massive collision between two different galaxies. One of them is that bigger galaxy known as NGC 1052, a relatively large elliptical galaxy located in the vicinity of the two smaller ones, and some kind of a smaller progenitor galaxy which could have actually become the remnant known as DF7, with the more exact steps defined in these images. So here we have two different galaxies with both dark matter and gas in them. The galaxies that upon their collision start to intermix, with some of the matter including old stars and old global clusters being thrown out to the outskirts along with, as you can see, dark matter. And because this was a head-on collision and very high-speed collision, the dark matter and various stars would have sailed past each other without any star interaction or collision, with the gas and the stars eventually slowing down, becoming more compact, and eventually forming new galaxies as a result. But the new galaxies did not contain any more dark matter because all of it was initially thrown away. And since this scenario connects the two galaxies we've discovered so far, along with potential other discoveries, and even connects them to the larger NGC 1052, at the moment this seems to be one of the better explanations out there, with all of this most likely happening approximately 8 billion years ago. But more importantly, all of this also forming other structures. Structures that could be found in future studies. At the moment this is of course a hypothesis, but by looking around this region and along this line, the future studies might be able to confirm this and more importantly discover some other unusual features we've never seen before or have never thought about, with some of these other galaxies potentially being some of the initial targets for the investigation. And so because at the moment there seem to be at least 3 to maybe even 7 dark matter free galaxies along this particular line, with 2 very strange faint galaxies at the end of the line as well, which as this image shows could be the actual dark matter and remaining material from the original collision, at the moment all of this presents a really really interesting scenario that definitely has to be confirmed that could actually provide us with a really good explanation for everything. And because both DF2 and DF4 galaxies are also relatively stable and also seem to be very different from other dark matter free galaxies which most likely were created relatively recently and most likely because of the interaction with much more massive neighbor, at the moment a collision 8 billion years ago is really the only possible and feasible explanation here. And naturally, if all of this is correct, it can also help scientists figure out how exactly dark matter behaves when galaxies collide, once again possibly even help scientists to figure out what dark matter actually is by looking at those two individual galaxies on the outskirts, and could also answer a lot of other questions in regards to various galactic collisions and what happens to various material in those galaxies when two galaxies collide at high speeds head on. Although at the moment it really only explains the formation of these two unusual galaxies DF2 and DF4, not really other galaxies we've discovered that don't possess dark matter in them, there are still some other ones which are unexplained even today. But it will probably take some time, possibly a few months, maybe even a few years, before the scientists can confirm and, well most importantly calculate, the distances and the masses to all of these galaxies observed in this picture and thus establish what's actually happening here and if the hypothesis is correct. It is a very exciting explanation, but it could be also completely wrong. For example, if a lot of these galaxies are not on the same line, and if they're actually much closer or much farther away from us, this kind of invalidates this entire explanation. But because this is the best explanation we have so far, I'm actually kind of excited to talk about this in some of the future videos as the new studies come out and as new explanations become available. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.